Hi guys, and welcome to part 41 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now, this video is going to continue on from my last one with the theme of vampirism, but I realise that some of you are probably not that interested in that, but perhaps you don't have Dawnguard, or perhaps you just didn't want to go the vampire route, and you're looking for some other mods. And if that's the case, you guys should go and check out another YouTuber's page. Uh, that YouTuber is Insanoflex. He does loads of Skyrim videos. He's got way over 200 videos. He's pretty undersubscribed actually, which is a shame because he does great quality videos. He covers a variety of mods, including some lesser known ones, which I really like. Uh, so go along to his channel, check out some of his videos and say hi from me. Okay, so if you're still here, I'm going to assume you are still interested in vampire mods, so let's get started. And the first mod I am going to cover is an overhaul mod, and it is called Belua Sanguinare Revisited. Um, and like the Better Vampires mod, it is a complete overhaul of uh, the entire vampire experience. Uh, but it is not compatible with Better Vampires, as far as I know. I, I cannot imagine they would be compatible, so don't even try. Now, I have only just started playing this mod, and to be brutally honest with you, it's probably one of those mods that it would take weeks of play to do it justice. Um, however, obviously, Vampires, they're all a rage right now, so I'm going to jump in and tell you what I know already. Uh, the first thing is, you don't automatically become a Bella Sanguinari Vampire. Uh, when you load the game, you will have a potion, a blood red potion in your inventory, and you drink that and it will transform you into uh, the Bellua Sanguinari Vampire. It has a very cool effect as you float in the air and transform. Really nicely done, actually. And once you are... Uh, transformed, you'll have a little journal, uh, this vampire journal, which will tell you all about the state you are currently in. It's it's sort of a, it's almost like a, a character screen, but it's in journal form. Uh, and this is going to be very useful for you to keep track of where you are in the progression as a Bellua Sanguinari vampire. Now, there are actually five ranks of this type of vampire. There is a Fledgling, Risen, Master, Progenitor, and Sire. Uh, fledgling is the weakest, and you get the least amount of power, but you also have the least number of weaknesses. Uh, so you, you're going to have to sort of balance your desire for power versus your uh, the inherent weaknesses it comes with. Because as you get all the way up to through Master, Progenitor, and Sire, uh, yes, you gain the power, but yes, you also start gaining some uh, some small dis disadvantages as well. Now, the the ranks you progress through by feeding, by killing, and then once you've done enough feeding and killing, you rest and you sort of progress to the next level once again with this magical transformation. Um, and you can also uh, reduce your ranks by starving yourself and going the same thing. Rest for 24 hours and drop a rank. Uh, but your your hunger is suddenly a very overpowering thing. I mean, this game is suddenly very much about being a vampire for me. Um, it doesn't matter what rank I'm at, if I start getting hungry, there are side effects. As you begin to get hungry, you will start finding you can detect life uh, which, believe it or not, it sounds like a good thing. It's a little distracting. It keeps, it gives you this sense of urgency that you Tell are getting you hungry. And if you get hungry enough, this sort of blood-like vapors seem to come out of your skin. And people recognize that you are a vampire and start attacking you. And the higher the rank vampire you are, the faster that transformation happens. So, um, if you're a fledgling, you can go all the way to starving before people notice you. But as a, as a sire vampire, you better keep yourself well fed, or you will get noticed. And the feeding is really well done as well. Uh, you can now sneak up to opponents and try to sneak feed on them. 
and uh, that is based upon your skill at sneak and pickpocket, apparently, and I am terrible at it. I have not successfully managed to hit yet. Uh, I don't have a stealthy character, I'm afraid. Um, at a certain level, you gain a power that will allow you to charm somebody and feed off them. I gained this power, then used it, and it disappeared, so I'm not a totally sure why it's disappeared. I'm hoping it comes back, because that's very useful. You can feed on people who are sleeping, uh, and that you can also feed on people in combat. When they, when they start bleeding out, when they crouch, telling you they submit, instead of killing them, if you activate on them, you get the option to feed on them, uh, which is very nice indeed. And they've also added the ability to feed on stunned opponents. Now, I've not tried this either, but uh, apparently if you stun an opponent, probably with your shield bash, you might be able to feed on them as well, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, the vampires get the usual things like the resistance to disease. They've also added weakness to sunlight. It's not just the fact that you don't regenerate. Uh, you can actually take damage as well. The damage you take is um, basically related to how powerful a vampire you are. So the higher level vampire, the more damage you take. That's not your player level, though. Uh, but they've also added some very, very cool new things. For example, if you enter somebody's house uninvited, uh, you start taking damage. So that's if you go into a house where you have to break in, where you have to pick the lock, you are now considered trespassing. You will start taking damage as if you were in sunlight, which is brilliant. Uh, there is also a weakness to garlic, so um, you'll start finding a lot of people will be carrying garlic, and you will not be able to affect them with your vampirism sp uh, spells. So the spell that allows you to charm a victim and feed off him probably won't work if he's carrying garlic. Uh, you're weak to silver, fire etc but and this one i loved shrines if you go near to shrines holy symbols you start taking a little damage and it also affects your vision um i i got closer and closer to a holy shrine and it seemed to actually be blinding me i couldn't see and until i got right on top of it i couldn't see a thing and i was taking massive amounts of damage so that's very cool holy symbols will hurt you and now, all of these things are dependent on how hungry you are. So if you're taking, if you're out in the sun or near a shrine, etc., and you're starving, you're going to take a lot more damage than if you are satiated. And that's what I think is brilliant about this mod, because uh, you can still gain in power by feeding all the time, and there is a massive incentive to keep feeding. Um, but going up in power, it's, it's not a simple task. There's a load of things to do. And so you're constantly, constantly having to keep yourself fed at all times. You're having to watch for sunlight. You're having to watch for, um, you know, if you want to feed on someone and you're really weak and you're famished and you sneak into their house. And if they've got a holy symbol in there, you could be in a lot of trouble. So you really have to work at being a vampire, and I love that. If you're a gruesome kind of person, um, you're going to love the next thing. You can harvest hearts. If you actually kill someone, um, there is a chance that you can get to them if they're the last person and you're not in combat and take their heart out. And you can then eat the heart and it will restore your health. Or you could even create these things called preservation jars and keep the heart for later use much like a potion. And this is going to be kind of useful because, unfortunately, as a vampire, healing spells do not affect you as much. Um, so if you use a lot of healing potions and healing spells, expect them to heal you a lot less. You're going to be casting those spells over and over again. Human, uh, The um, hearts you rip from your victims, they are by far your best healing potions. And there are so many other bonuses, I couldn't even consider it. For example, the more powerful you are, the faster you will sprint, and the less you will use stamina, because um, you don't breathe, obviously, so, and so on. There are so many things. There are loads of new little uh, powers, uh, most of which I haven't even begun 
to uh, use. There is a power that allows you to hide your vampiric form, but when you cast that power, you will slowly drain magicka, so you can't keep it up forever, and you will have no vampire powers. So if you're starving and you use that power, you cannot feed until you drop that power. So all these powers are really, really well balanced. If you want full details as to what what each rank gives and all the powers, they give excellent documentation. Uh, the documentation is superbly done. And uh, it's well worth trying out. If you're a vampire um, or you fancy playing a vampire, but you want an experience that really makes you focus on being a vampire, this is the mod for you. This is not, this mod does not make the game easier because you are a vampire. Being a vampire with this mod almost becomes the game. You will focus equally on being a vampire as you do on your other quests and goals. So if you just wanted an easy experience as a vampire, if you just wanted to, you know, have a little bit of immortality and a bit of extra power, this mod is probably not for you. But if you wanted to really feel like life revolved around, or death revolved around being a vampire, this mod is definitely the one I would recommend. Now, there are probably one or two people out there who are wondering how it was I was breaking into those houses without using lockpicks and noticed a, an option for uh, Master Open. Um, so if I normally go up to a door like this and activate it, I get the lockpick. However, there is a mod there is a mod called Open and Lock Spells, and it basically does exactly that. It adds some open spells and lock spells uh, for you to buy. You can buy them just like other spells at the college, for example. And they come in different levels, Open Adept, Apprentice, etc. And you basically equip the spell, cast it, and then you've got 15 seconds. And for the next 15 seconds, if you activate a locked door, you get this option, in this case because I cast the master spell, master opening. And that will open any lock master level or below. Obviously the adept one will do adept or below. So if you have need of uh, a little bit of breaking and entry, perhaps you're a magical thief or perhaps you're not really a thief at all, but you just don't like to leave all those filled chests behind, this is a great mod that gives wizards an alternative to messing around with locks and picks. To install Belua Sanguinaire Revisited, go along to the Nexus page, the file section, and download with Manager on the latest release. There are some optional files, but I don't really need them at the moment. I am not playing a Wood Elf, uh, but there is apparently a fix for that. So if you are playing a Wood Elf, you should check that out as well. So you're going to download with Manager and activate it in Nexus Mod Manager as, as per normal. Um, I have got uh, the revisited, the revisited dialogue fixes, the loot tables, the refuge, and the stamina sprint drain. But there is one other file I do not have selected, that is the Belua Sanguinaire Revisited Vampire Race. Now, I think what this is, is it gives you a different visual experience, but it will also get rid of those double feed dialogues you get. So if you, if you try to feed on someone, you'll get a standard feed option and then a um, BSR feed. Now obviously you, you want the BSR feed to progress in this mod. However, um, I sp sent a message to the mod author and apparently Dawnguard source code has not been released yet. So if you're a vampire lord from Dawnguard, there may be some issues with that file for this. I'm not 100% sure what those issues are, but I, I decided not to try it, which is a shame because it sounds really cool to be very, very pale skinned. Apparently they've, they've changed the way you look. So hopefully Dawnguard uh, source code will be released sometime and they will be able to get that working for Vampire Lords as well. But just be aware of that. They have got very detailed documentation. So read up on the installation process. And if for some reason you want to uninstall this, read the uninstallation. It's not particularly difficult, but you do need to 
basically go to the console, set a value, wait one hour, then save your game and uninstall. It's not hugely difficult, but this is a massive mod that overhauls a lot of things. So be sure to do that if you uninstall. The open and lock spells um, mod, dead easy. Um, just go along to Nexus Mod Manager and click Download with Manager and Activate. It really is very easy. Now, I believe there is an open spell in Midas, um, the Magic Overhaul. I covered that in a very early one of my videos. Um, so, if you're using that, you probably already have an open spell. But, again, this one's a standalone mod, just adds just those spells. And as usual, I'm going to finish with some screenshots that you guys have made. If you want to post screenshots for me to put in these videos, you can follow the link I'll put down below to my Skyrim Mod Sanctuary Nexus page and post the images there. Um, you're more than welcome to do that and I will try and post as many as I can each episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. If it was, please click the like button. I always appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you guys on my next video, whatever that is. And until then, as always, have fun.